Hi, I'm Paul Nome, and in this video we are going to go over how to pass your exams to get your instructor license for cosmetology, aesthetics, nail tech, or natural hair. I posted a video about this a few years back, but some things have changed and updated, so this video is going to have all the updated and current info. Um, I also have resources on my website, cosmoteach.com, where you can find things like sample lesson plans, uh, and videos, and if you'd like some help passing the exam, I do offer a personalized one-on-one -on -one, uh, training course where I'll meet with you to help you get prepped for the exam, I'll help you put together your lesson plans, and we'll even do a mock practical exam over Zoom so that you can be fully prepared, confident, and ready to pass the practical. Uh, so that and other resources are available at cosmoteach.com. I'll link that in the description below. Um, before we begin, I want to talk about who this video is for. So this is for anybody who is a licensed cosmetologist, esthetician, nail tech, or natural hair specialist who wants to get their instructor license uh, in states that have the NIC exam. So if you don't know which exam your state administers, contact your regulatory board, your cosmetology board. So this is going to be for anybody in a state with an NIC exam. And the information in this video, even though I'm in North Carolina, so I may talk about that a little bit, but is going to apply to all states that have the NIC exam. This is also going to apply to all disciplines. So uh, a, the, the teaching exam is going to be the same for a cosmetologist, an esthetician, and so on. Um, you're not being you're not being tested on your knowledge of like the content of that course. Like you don't have to worry about, you know, what what are the layers of the skin, what is hair made of, that sort of thing. It's more about instructional theory and your ability to understand lesson planning and things like that. So what is the exam? Um, you have a practical and a written theory portion of the exam. So your practical exam, now not all states do both the practical and the theory exam, your state may just do the theory exam, and if that's the case, feel free to skip ahead to that portion of the video. I'll have timestamps in the description. Uh, but the practical exam is going to consist of um, two portions, a lecture, a theory lecture, and a demonstration. And you'll have to create a lesson plan for each of those, uh, and we'll talk more in detail about this um, in a little bit. But you'll have to do a theory lecture and a demonstration with a lesson plan the uh, written theory portion of the exam is a multiple choice computerized exam testing you on your knowledge of instructional theory uh, and things like that. So um, I'll also get into resources and how to study for that. So one thing I want you to know right off the bat is that the practical exam is not as, uh, it's a lot more intimidating than it is actually difficult. A lot of it just comes with being prepared properly and having your lesson plans correct. Um, and if you do that, the exam uh, is actually a breeze. Um, all of your work is going to be in the preparation. And then as far as the theory exam, it's all about just getting that course book, which I'll show you in just a bit, and uh, making sure you study the right stuff from that. So let's get started. What you're seeing on your screen right now is called the Candidate Information Bulletin. So this is the NIC document that outlines all of the rules, procedures, and stuff for your exam. So we're going to go over this. Now, how do you find this? You're going to go to your state cosmetology board, and they are going to have a link to uh, for you to be able to get to this. So um, it, our state, for example, uses ProvExam as the administrator. So I would go to provexam.com. I would go to four test takers. Uh, your state may use PSI or DL Roop. It's just going to look a little bit different, but the information, once you pull up that document, is going to look the same. So I'm going to scroll down to my state, and I'm going to click on Instructor CIB, and that pulls up that document. So the top portion of the document you're going to see, this is going to be state-specific. So I'm not going to go over this here in the video. Um, because it's going to be different depending on where you're testing. So uh, just make sure that you take a look at that, um, read through that, because it's going to outline uh, procedures as far as like applying for your exam, how to take your exam, where to take your exam, um, how to schedule, 
uh, ADA procedures, um, things like that. And once you get past that, you'll get into this will look the same no matter what state you're in. So this is the candidate information bulletin for the uh, practical exam. So first off, um, this has a number of important instructions. This section right here is going to is the same as um, it is for the uh, regular um, practical exam to get your cosmetology or aesthetics uh, or nail tech license or natural hair or whatever. Um, so a lot of these are just going to be like sanitation procedures and things like that. And then we'll get into exam specific information on the next page. Uh, so first off, um, just know that your exam is administered in a testing environment. So um, you have to show ID to get in. You can't leave the exam area without permission. Uh, one other thing to note is uh, if you have prov exam as your administrator, they are doing remote exams. So if your state is one that uses remote exams, we'll talk about that at the end as well. So your state may do in person, and a lot of this is going to apply. If you do remote exams, you basically have to download an app, set up your camera, and you are tested with somebody on Zoom, but you're still in your own house. Um, so we'll talk about the differences there and just find out from your board or from whoever administers the test for your state, um, find out what the format of the test is. But as far as the actual what you're doing in the exam, it's going to be the same. Candidates are required to bring a supply kit for their own use, so you have to make sure that you have all the supplies you need, properly cleaned and disinfected, and in working order. Your kit will be used during the exam as dry storage and is considered part of the work area, so your kit needs to be something that can close and seal. It need, either needs to zip shut or snap shut, so uh, something like a tote bag would not work because it doesn't close, it's open at the top, but something like a duffel bag that zips, or some people bring like a, a carry-on size suitcase, or a plastic storage bin as long as it can snap shut at the top. Um, it's dry storage, so just know that everything inside it is considered clean. Once you open it and remove something, it cannot go back in because then you would be contaminating everything else inside it. And also that kit cannot be left open at any point during the exam. So you can open it to grab stuff out of it and then close it immediately after. All exams are administer administered in a testing environment. Candidates are evaluated at all times and pay attention to the disinfectant procedures. So this has changed uh, recently. So if you took your exam years and years ago, you may have been able to use like a disinfectant spray. Now they are requiring EPA registered disinfectant wipes. So it has to be wipes, not spray, and it has to be wipes that demonstrate bactericidal, fungicidal, and viricidal properties. So this needs to be a hospital disinfectant wipe, not just like your regular Clorox or Lysol wipes that you um, that you have in your house, because those are household disinfectants. These need to be hospital disinfectants. So let me show you what that looks like. So here's a couple of examples. I just searched for um, I just searched for hospital disinfectant wipes on Amazon. These are great. Um, these super sandy cloth germicidal disposable wipe uh, or the Clorox healthcare brand. Make sure it's the Clorox healthcare and not the regular Clorox wipe, um, but that works too. Also, your local beauty supply store will probably have barbicide wipes that you can use. Uh, those are a little more expensive than the options you're seeing here, um, but that is something you can do as well. Due to standardization of the NIC national exam, uh, proctors and examiners have to adhere to certain standards. So they have to read the verbal instructions twice for each section. They're not allowed to communicate with candidates or speak with you in any way. So they can't answer questions or anything like that. If you ask them a question during the exam, the only thing they're allowed to say to you is do the best you can with what you have available or do as you were taught. If you have any kind of emergency, let the proctor know. You'll be given time to set up your universal supplies that you'll use throughout the exam. Universal supplies are just your things like disinfectant, hand sanitizer, um, paper towels, just your like general stuff. Each section of the exam has a maximum time allowance. Uh, don't worry about these next couple of bullet points because that applies to tests that have multiple people in the room. 
During all phases of the exam, candidates must follow all appropriate public protection and infection control procedures and maintain a safe work area. So what this means is that uh, throughout the exam, whether you're lecturing or demonstrating, you are following sanitation procedures when it comes to your tools, your implements, and how you're going about everything. Also, when it comes to blood exposure, if you were to happen to, let's say, be doing a haircut and accidentally cut yourself, you do have to go through the blood exposure procedure. Failure to do so may result in your dismissal from the exam. Uh, you also have to maintain a safe work area. So what does that mean? So a safe work area is um, things that could be unsafe would be like if you dropped an implement and left it there instead of picking it up, then it's a slip hazard. So that's unsafe, right? Um, or if you left your kit open for the entire exam instead of zipping it shut or snapping it shut, that's an unsafe work area. So be really careful about those things. You can get docked a lot of points or even be dismissed from the exam for not maintaining a safe work area. So if a candidate does not follow infection control procedures or allows the work area to become and remain unsafe, the result may be a failing score for the examination. They said the same thing like three times in a row, so that's how important they take that. Things that are prohibited during the exam, uh, any kind of electronic devices, cell phones, watches, uh, smart or dumb watches, no, none of them are allowed. Um, if you are taking the test in person, you're going to have to uh, make sure that you practice really well so that you know that your content is going to fit within the allotted time window. I'll talk more about that in a bit. Um, if you're taking the exam remotely, you have a clock on your screen that helps. So I'll show you what that looks like at the end. Uh, no disruptive behavior allowed. Uh, all supplies must be labeled in English. So your supplies need to look like um, or need to have a label on them. There are two things that need to have a manufacturer's label on them, your disinfectant wipes and your hand sanitizer. Those need to be original manufacturer's labels. Everything else can be a handwritten label if you want. Um, and any other products can be simulated. Your disinfectant and hand sanitizer have to be the real thing. But if you're, let's say you, uh, you're assigned color as your, as your topic, you can use anything you have lying around the house, lotion, conditioner, uh, whatever, as your color, as long as it's labeled hair color and you can write that label on. Um, but for the disinfectant and hand sanitizer, you need to have original manufacturer's labels. Uh, simulated products are not allowed for those two, and aerosols are not allowed at all in the testing environment. Um, also, candidates are to perform all tasks utilizing products and supplies as they were taught. So what does this mean uh, as they were taught? One thing that we teach when we teach our students state board is that state board does not grade technique. So if we are curling hair, for example, they don't care if I curl from the ends of the hair and you curl from the base and then feed the hair in. Those are both correct techniques. Neither one of them is wrong. So they don't care about what technique you use. They just care, did we both do it safely and with sanitation and did we end up with the right end result. So when it comes to your uh, content of your lecture and your demonstration, don't be super worried about whether you're doing exactly the right thing or whether your te technique is exactly the way they want it because that's not what they were looking for. So just do anything how you know how to do it and follow your safety and sanitation procedures, have the right things in your lesson plan and you will be good. Now, here is where we get to uh, what you need to know about the instructor exam specifically. So you will be assigned a topic. Let's just say your topic is, I don't know, color retouch. You will prepare a theory lecture lesson plan and a demonstration lesson plan for the assigned topic. So you'll have two lesson plans total. Both of them need to include blood exposure procedures. They're very serious about that. Um, You'll get docked a lot of points if you don't have that, so we'll talk more about that when we get into lesson plans. Your lesson plans must be original, originally developed by you. Anything that is not your original work is considered plagiarism. They also need to be typed, not handwritten. 
you should bring a set or you have to bring a set of lesson plans for yourself, the proctor and the examiner. So if you're taking an in-person exam, you will need three copies of each of your lesson plans. So that means six copies total, three copies of the lecture, three copies of the demonstration. And if you're taking a remote exam, you will just email them your lesson plans in advance. Now, you are allowed during the exam to have your lesson plan with you and be teaching from it. In fact, that's encouraged because that's what you would do in real life too. So don't think that you have to sit there and memorize everything that's in your lesson plan. You're able to teach from your lesson plan. So that's why, like I was saying earlier, as long as you prepare your lesson plan correctly and have all your kit and everything correctly, include your safety and sanitation procedures and stuff, you'll be good. So when you, so if you're taking an in-person exam, you'll keep one copy and hand the rest to the examiners. It's your responsibility to bring anything you will need to complete all sections. Uh, one more really important thing is you are not allowed to use electronics for either the theory lecture or the demonstration. So no PowerPoint, no screens, no iPads, anything like that. Just keep it really simple. Um, you don't want anything that could possibly go wrong on test day. So for your lecture, you may just want to do like a poster board with notes on it or a dry erase board that you can write on, flip charts, anything like that. Whatever you feel most comfortable using, just as long as it's not electronic. Um, this next part you may remember from your initial practical exam when you got your license. You will need to have three containers to dispose of everything. To be disinfected, soiled linens, and trash. So one of the things that they want to make sure that you know how to do is when you're done with something, where does it go? If it's an implement you're going to use again, it goes into be disinfected. If it's something that you uh, can't use again, something porous, paper towel, sponges, whatever, that goes in trash. If it's a cape, towel, something like that, goes in soiled linens. Best way to do that is just to have stand up paper bags, <clears throat> like paper bags you'd get from the grocery store or gift bags you'd get for your birthday and then just label them to be disinfected, soiled linens, and trash. Label them exactly those words. Don't say dirty linens, say soiled linens. Don't say to be cleaned, say to be disinfected. And have those three sitting there and know what to put in each one. Also, candidates are not allowed to label products as single-use items. What this is referring to is they also want to make sure that if you have a container of product, that you know how to remove it from its container safely and with sanitation. So, you know, you wouldn't dip your finger directly into a product, that kind of thing. In the past, candidates have tried to get around this by labeling things as single use and saying, oh, this is single use. That means I can dip my finger in or double dip or do whatever. But they're just saying you can't do that. That's kind of a loophole. They're making sure that you don't do that and you actually do show them that you know how to get things out of their containers. And in accordance with manufacturer's guidelines, gloves must be worn during disinfection procedures. So there are three main content domain sections for the instructor practical exam. The lesson plan, the theory lecture, and the demonstration. So now we're going to talk about each of them. We'll start by talking about the lesson plan. So again, you will have two lesson plans, one for the theory lecture, one for the demonstration. The initial instructions they will give you are you will turn in your classroom theory lecture and demonstration lesson plans at this time. Please retain one set of lesson plans for yourself and provide the rest to the proctor. The examiner will have 10 minutes to review your lesson plans. Do nothing until the next verbal instructions are given. So what are you being graded on? Introduction, content, teaching aids, and closing. So let's look at a sample lesson plan. And if you have access to Milady lesson plans, or if you don't, um, you can Google it and there are Milady lesson plans online. But this is just what one might look like. So this is, this is the lesson plan for, for example, haircutting. Uh, again, don't worry if you're an esthetician, nail tech, or natural hair specialist. 
the format of the lesson plan is going to apply to all disciplines, so don't worry that this isn't part of your discipline. So what do you need to have? The first thing that they were grading on was the introduction, right? So what do you need to have in your introduction? Well, you need to have at the top, just have your topic, whatever topic they gave you. <clears throat> Don't do name or anything like that. You're not allowed to have your name or anything identifying uh, in, your, in your exam or in your kit or anywhere. You should put lesson objectives. So that would just be, in this lesson, we're going to learn blank and blank and blank. Won't be as long as this, obviously, because you're not teaching for as long. Uh, supplies required. So what will you need to teach? This will look different for your lecture versus for your demonstration. So for your lecture, it would say like whatever teaching aids you're going to use, a poster board, a flip chart, a whiteboard, markers, whatever you need to, however you decide to do that, just make sure you have it all listed. For your demonstration, you'll have uh, your teaching aids, including all of your supplies that you're going to use for that portion of the exam. Your tools, your implements, your mannequin, your capes, all that. Um, facility, you can just write theory classroom. Time allotment, you can write uh, 15 to 20 minutes, which is the time window for your lecture, and 25 to 30 minutes, which is the time window for your demonstration. Prior student assignment, have something here. Um, you can just say before the lecture or before this lesson, students will have to have read whatever chapter in your textbook. Um, and that's fine. And then don't worry about these educator references or instructor teaching path or anything like that. Uh, as long as you have all those things I just mentioned, you'll be good. Now, the next thing we want to take a look at is what does the content of your exam look like. So we covered the 1.1 lesson plan introduction. Let's talk about 1.2, the lesson plan content. So for your lecture, this is just gonna look like an outline. So here's an example of what an outline looks like. Yours will not to need to be anywhere near this detailed or thorough. This is a really long chapter. You have uh, 15 minutes between 15 and 20 minutes to teach your lecture and between 25 and 30 minutes to teach your demonstration. So if your if your exam topic is, for example, hair color, obviously you're not going to be able to teach everything you need to, everything you would need to teach about hair color in 20 minutes, right? So you're just going to come up with about 15 to 20 minutes worth of content. So write that out in outline form and then just follow that as you're teaching. What you want to make sure of is that everything that's in your lesson plan that you actually teach, so you're not skipping over anything you wrote down in your lesson plan, and everything you teach is in your lesson plan. So some, some folks like to go off on a tangent and tell this story or define that thing or whatever. If you teach it, it needs to be in your lesson plan. That doesn't mean you have to read your lesson plan word for word necessarily. It just means that all the content in the lesson plan is going to be taught. Now, how much content to add? Again, 15 to 20 minutes for the, for the lecture, 25 to 30 minutes for the demonstration. The way to know how much is the right amount of content, the only way to do that is to practice. So once you've gotten your outline written out, go ahead and practice to yourself out loud. Even if it feels weird talking to yourself in an empty room, just do it anyway, because that's the only way you can get the rhythm for how how fast you need to go, how much more or less content you need to have. And another piece of advice, and this is really, really important, because this is something that every every single person who I've passed through this program uh, has made the mistake of, and myself too, when I, when I took my exam, is we will get, we will tend to get really nervous, and that means that we will talk super quickly. And... We do that without even thinking about it or without realizing we'll do it, we're doing it. And what that does is it makes you get through your lesson plan way too quick. So you'll end up teaching your whole lesson plan in 10 minutes and you've still got, you know, five to 10 minutes to go. So when it comes to teaching your lesson plan, I want you to really consciously slow yourself down, even if it means speaking almost exaggeratedly slowly like this. That's kind of how you need to do it to, 
to be able to stretch out that content because you will talk faster than you want to without realizing it. So be very, very careful to slow yourself down. The next thing is teaching aids. So just making sure that you have your teaching aids listed in the lesson plan and that you use them when you're teaching. We went over what that was uh, earlier. And your closing. So after the content in the lesson plan, you'll need to have some sort of closing, and that just needs to be a summary, a quick little summary. Today, students, we talked about blah, 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 right? And then a um, some sort of method of evaluation. So for your lecture, it may be students will take, um, take the test on such and such chapter. For your demonstration, that may be students will perform a such and such on a mannequin or whatever. Um, oh, and uh, one more thing about lesson plan content. Forgot to mention this. Uh, I talked about how your for your lecture it should be in outline form. For your demonstration, that content is going to be in procedure form, like step one, step two, step three, and so on, because that's what you're going to go by when you're demonstrating this on your mannequin during your exam. Um, and I do have sample lesson plans also available on my website. So once they have reviewed your lesson plans, they will tell you, we will now proceed, and then you get to the fun part. The theory lecture comes next. So the instructions will be as follows. You will be presenting your classroom theory lecture on blank, whatever your topic was. You will be observed for client protection, safety, and infection control procedures throughout the examination. You will have five minutes to set up for your classroom theory lecture. You will be informed when you have two minutes remaining. When you are finished, please be seated until the next verbal instructions are given. The instructions will be repeated, and then once they repeat them, they'll tell you, you may begin. So this first part, this first five minutes, is just setting up your area for the classroom theory lecture. If you have a table or station of any kind, uh, make sure you disinfect that before putting anything on it with your disinfectant wipes. And then go ahead and set out your three trash bags at this point as well. Your, your to be disinfected, your trash, and your soiled linens. As well as anything you're going to use for your theory lecture. Don't worry about setting up for your demo just yet. You'll have time to do that later. So you don't need to set up your mannequin just yet. Um, or any tools unless your tools are being used as visual aids. Like you may, you may have some kind of tool to show to the class, something like that, then in that case, you would go ahead and have it out. But don't need to set up for your demo just yet, just that five minutes to simple set up for your theory. The candidate has indicated they have finished. We will now proceed. And then they will tell you, <clears throat> you will now begin the classroom theory lecture. Your lecture must be at least 15 minutes, but must not exceed 20 minutes. Verbally indicate to the proctor when you have finished. For example, I'm ready, I'm finished, or I'm done. The instructions will be repeated. They will repeat the instructions and then tell you, you may begin. So again, you have 15 minutes, or it needs to be at least 15 minutes, and no more than 20 minutes. So anywhere in that window, and you're good. Candidates will be evaluated on the following tasks. So first, introduction to lecture. So you, you already wrote that in your lesson plan, your objectives and everything. So uh, today, students, we are going to talk about blah, 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 blah. The content of your lecture. That is where you're going to be going through that outline that you already wrote and teaching it. And remember what I said, as long as your lesson plan is put together well and you prepared your kit well and you follow your safety and sanitation procedures, this exam, this part of the exam is actually going to be super easy. So, um, the content of your lecture is everything you had in that outline. Remember earlier when we said that both your theory lesson plan and your demo lesson plan need to have the blood exposure procedure included. So make sure that that is in the content of your lecture and your demo. And I, the advice I give for this is I would go ahead and put that first. Put it right up front at the beginning of your content section because if the if you have it last and the timer goes off before you're finished lecturing then you would lose points for not having that as part of your lecture so go ahead and put that first so that you can go ahead and teach it get it out of the way and then get on to the rest of your content 
Uh, 2.5, use of teaching aids. Did you actually use your teaching aids, your visual aids, during your lecture? You know, if you had a whiteboard with notes on it or something, you're pointing to the things, you're uh, using them to stimulate your students as you're teaching. 2.6, use of communication skills. So one thing that you have to do during your exam is you have to actually pretend like there's a class in the room and interact with them. Sure, it feels weird and awkward and whatever, but um, it's something you have to do. They just want to make sure that you know how to interact with your class and not just teach to a brick wall, you know. So you have to do things like, um, and what do we do when, what's the first thing we do when we drop our comb? That's right, Sally, we blah, 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 right? Um, or you can pretend somebody asked a question. Oh, uh, good question, Jenny, blah, 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 blah. So uh, just interact with your class, interact with the invisible class that's there. And 2.8 is the closing of your lecture. So that is the stuff we included at the end of the lesson plan. So today, class, we talked about bump, a bump, a bump, a bump. And the next thing you'll do is you are going to test on this chapter. And then safety and infection control. Did you follow safety and infection control procedures throughout your lecture? That's not going to matter as much during the lecture as during the demonstration, but just be aware of it. You know, sanitize your hands, disinfect your workstation before you put anything on it, those sorts of things. Once you're finished with, once you're finished lecturing, remember to tell them, I'm ready, I'm finished, or I'm done. And they will say the candidate has indicated they have completed this section of the examination. We will now proceed. Then you'll move on to your demo. You will be presenting your demonstration on blank. You will be observed for client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have 10 minutes to remove any materials that you no longer need from the previous section and set up for your demonstration. You will be informed when you have five minutes remaining. Do not begin your demonstration until instructed to do so. Verbally indicate to the proctor when you have finished. For example, I'm ready, I'm finished, or I'm done. The instructions will be repeated. So this is just going to be your 10-minute setup for your demonstration. So when they say go, when they say you may begin, you're going to put away anything from your lecture that you no longer need, like your whiteboard or what have you, and you're going to get out your mannequin, tripod, um, all the tools and implements and products and supplies that you'll need for this portion. Go ahead and disinfect your area again, just to be safe. Uh, sanitize your hands before setting any of that stuff up. And remember to close your kit back once you have removed materials from it. So you're gonna set everything up. Uh, you don't have to worry about draping your mannequin just yet because that can be part of your demo as long as you include it in the content of your lesson plan. And then once you are set up, they will say the candidate has indicated they've finished. We will now proceed. You will now begin the demonstration. Your demonstration must be at least 25 minutes, but must not exceed 30 minutes. Verbally indicate to the proctor when you have finished. For example, I'm ready, I'm finished, or I'm done. The instructions will be repeated, and then you may begin. So this is going to be the same as what we just went over for the lecture for the most part. Introduction to demonstration. Today we're going to learn blank. Content of demonstration. In this lesson plan, you have it. You have the content section laid out as a set of procedures, a one, two, three, step by step. So you are following that content, and you are performing the demonstration as you have outlined. When you're demonstrating, just be conscious of things like, um, like if you're a teacher and you have a classroom in front of you and you have a mannequin, be conscious of like where you're standing when you're doing something that you're not standing where you're blocking the view. So be cognizant of those things. Demonstrates blood exposure procedure. So you do have to perform the blood exposure procedure for your students. Again, make sure this is up front in your content section so that you can go ahead and demonstrate that, get it out of the way, and move on. That way you know you're not going to get run out of time and not have time to teach it or anything like that. Classroom interaction. Again, you're interacting with the pretend class that isn't there asking questions, answering questions, things like that, and then closing of demonstration. Same as before, today we learned blank. You're, you'll be evaluated by uh, performing a blank on a mannequin. 
and then the candidate has indicated they have completed this section of the examination, we will now proceed. So now you're done demonstrating and lecturing, the last thing you're going to do is clean up. Now um, this is also different than the exam in years past because they used to just read you the instructions when you were done, you could just throw everything in your bag and get going. Um, now they want to make sure that you actually do put everything in its proper containers and everything. So. Uh, you will have five minutes to clean up your work area. You will be informed when you have two minutes remaining. You will be observed for client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. Verbally indicate to the proctor when you have finished. For example, I'm ready, I'm finished, or I'm done. The instructions will be repeated and you may begin. So at this point, just take all your tools and implements, place them in items to be disinfected. All your soiled linens, place them in soiled linens. Uh, all your Disposables, single-use items, place them in trash. Um, you don't have to put your mannequin anywhere. Your mannequin can just stay on the tripod or on the table or whatever, but all the towels, everything else um, needs to go in all the correct containers. And then they will tell you, please do nothing until the next verbal instructions are given. And at that point, they read you the final instructions. The examiner has indicated they have completed their assessment, blah, 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 you're done. So once they read these final, final instructions, then you don't have to worry about uh, sanitation anymore. You can just throw everything in your bag and get going. And that is the practical exam. Uh, any questions that you have about this, feel free to drop them in the comments below this video and I'll do my best to answer them. But again, um, if you feel like uh, doing a mock exam would help, then by all means, um, check out my one-on-one -on -one coaching course. I've coached uh, many instructors through this course and all of them have passed. So uh, I do offer that service uh, and I'd be happy to help you out. Now, um, the last thing that you're gonna see on this part is the suggested examination supplies. So just pay attention to this when you're packing your kit. This is like everything that you're gonna need. Um, and then add to this whatever specific things that you'll need for your uh, for your demonstration or whatever. Uh, one more quick footnote about the blood exposure procedure. If you are uh, like me in North Carolina, uh, North Carolina has its own blood exposure procedure that um, you have to have or you have to perform it exactly like this and you have to have it exactly like this in your lesson plans. So um, what I was saying earlier about like how you don't, everything has to be originally your work and you can't plagiarize. Um, this part, when it comes to the blood exposure procedure, that's not considered plagiarism. You can just have that listed step by step just as it is. Don't worry about the, or don't include the stuff that's in parentheses here, but everything that's in bold needs to be part of your blood exposure procedure. You need to have that exactly like that in your lecture and your demo lesson plans. You need to teach it exactly like this in your lecture and demonstrate it exactly like this in your demonstration. And go through that when you're um, when you're packing your kit as well. Make sure you have everything you're going to need for this. Now we will talk about the theory examination. So this is going to be a computerized written exam. Um, it's just multiple choice, and it looks like if you have Prov Exam as your testing agency, it looks like this. Uh, if you have another testing agency, it's probably still going to look very similar. Um, you've seen something like this before. You, when you took your driver's license test, it looked similar to this. Um, so it's a it's a multiple choice exam. It allows you to skip questions, flag questions, come back to them, things like that. When it comes to um, taking the theory multiple choice exam, uh, I have a couple of pieces of advice. One is you want to make sure that um, that you go ahead and get through the entire exam before you go back and start to answer the ones that were tough for you. So just go go through the exam once, skip any question you don't know, answer all the ones you do, and then come back to the ones that you skipped and you could spend a little more time on those. You don't wanna be going through the exam, stop for five minutes on one question, finally answer it, and then you are running out of time for the rest of your questions. So get through the whole exam, answer all the ones you know, 
go back, answer all the ones you skipped, and then if you have time to do like one last review before you turn it in or before you hit submit, uh, I'll always have students who go back and change their answers and then the thing they changed it to ends up being wrong. So always, uh, always leave your answers with whatever you put initially unless you have really good reason to change it. Don't just go changing because like a lot of students, it's like sort of a test anxiety thing. Like, uh, I don't feel good about that. I'm going to change it. And then the thing they did put ended up being right. And the thing they changed it to ended up being wrong. So really you should only change an answer if you're a hundred percent sure, if you remember something you didn't remember earlier and you know that that answer needs to be changed. Otherwise just leave it. So get through the exam, skip all the questions you don't know, come back, answer all the questions you've skipped, only change answers if you're 100% positive that you need to. Now this is uh, administered in a testing center that you will go to um, depending on your state. Um, some states will have multiple testing centers. Hopefully there's one near you and you won't have to travel. Um, but you'll have to uh, register. You'll need your ID to register. Same kind of situation. It's a standardized exam. Nobody's allowed to talk to you. You're not allowed to talk to anybody else. Uh, no possession of any electronic devices. All that can be considered cheating. No disruptive behavior. Now, what is on the theory exam? So there are three uh, domain sections. There's instructional planning, which accounts for a third of the questions on the exam. Instructional methods, which account for a third. And theory and practical classroom, which accounts for another third. So the instructor theory exam uh, is going to be all about instructor methodology. It has nothing to do with, you're not going to be asked anything about cosmetology, aesthetics, nail tech, or natural hair at all. This is all going to be stuff relating to uh, learning styles, lesson planning, uh, lecturing, demonstrating, assessments, things like that. So where do you get this information from or how do you learn this? So you are going to want to pick up the Milady Master Educator book. Um, here is it there, it's being sold on Amazon for as of the time of this video 67 bucks, which is really really good. It used to be a lot more expensive. Um, so you can buy that. Uh, you can even I believe you can even sell it. You should be able to sell it back used or pass it on to somebody. Um, once you've finished your exam and everything, or just keep it as a resource for yourself because it's got a lot of great information in it. But this is going to be the book that's going to contain all of that information. So what I would do is I would go by this outline and really focus on these things that it is asking you to study. Um, so instructional planning, you want to know about how to manage the curriculum delivery process, your syllabus, your course outline, lesson plans, delivery, things like that. Uh, identifying student learning styles and needs and how to adapt to those. How to utilize instructional materials and the different types. How to assess uh, students in different ways. Under instructional methods, what are your different methods of instruction? What obstacles to learning are there? How do you adapt? Uh, how to employ communication skills, verbal, nonverbal skills, and listening, time management, how to assess student learning. And then for the theory and practical cl classroom, you want to be able to manage physical and virtual learning environments, demonstrate instructor professional responsibilities, and maintain a safe learning environment, and all the things that those contain. So this book is going to contain all the information you need to know for that. Uh, another thing is you don't need to sit there and worry about reading this entire book word for word. That'll take you forever. Just really, if you can focus on the, um, what are the main things that it's trying to tell you? Try to focus on like your bold face words, try and focus on the really technical stuff that's in there. Some of the things that are going to be on this exam, you can kind of, I'll show you some sample questions in just a sec. But some of the things you can kind of deduce from common sense and process of elimination and stuff. But then some of the things when it comes to like learning styles, classroom layouts, uh, lesson plans, things like that, you really need to uh, focus on the content of this book and, and understand that stuff so that you're prepared going in. 
The other thing you can do to help you prepare is you can get your hands on this, the exam review book for the master educator. So this is a, um, and this one is, as of this video, it's uh, $51. This is just an exam review book that has questions, sample exams from each chapter, and that can really help you if you want to get the multiple choice um, practice before you take this exam. So uh, I believe also PSI sells a practice exam for this as well, so you can look that up. So that is your course content. That's what you're going to want to study. Plan yourself a good, nice, realistic study schedule. Um, don't try to cram it all in one week, but also don't spread it out over six months because then you'll forget what you started studying. And just know yourself, know how you study best and, and how you learn best. Some people learn with by uh, some people learn by just reading, some people learn by reading and then taking notes, highlighting, some people learn best with flashcards, just whatever your whatever your method of learning is, um, just stick to that. But again, the content is uh, a lot of it is not going to be super duper difficult. You just need to kind of really focus on the technical stuff. So this document also outlines some sample questions. This isn't like a full practice test. This is just like eight questions to kind of just show you what the exam looks like. There's not, what you'll notice is these aren't like tricky questions. There's not like a, a lot of like all of the following except but this kind of questions. It's more um, just do you know it or you don't. So like question one, for example, which of the following should be recorded in an educator's time utilization log? So even if you don't know this, you probably should be able to knock two of those out and process of elimination immediately. So like disciplinary actions, that doesn't really make sense to be in a time log. Students' grades doesn't need to be in a time log. And that leaves you with like planned work and clocked hours. And clocked hours refers more to like uh, what hours they were on the clock. Planned work, that has to do with time utilization. So like you can look at the keyword here, time utilization, planning, work. So like that's what I mean when I say these, a lot of these are going to be questions that you can kind of deduce. Um, and then some of them are going to be more technical questions. Question four here, when a large group of students is divided for group discussion, an effective arrangement is the cluster, chevron, theater, or boardroom. That's a more technical question that you're going to have to learn from the book. So, so focus on that stuff. Um, really focus on what's in this outline and find that section of the book and really make sure that you're studying that. Um, but that is the theory exam. The last thing I'm going to talk about is the remote practical exam. So again, if you are in a state that administers the remote practical exam, this is what that looks like. So you will have to download an app. They're going to want you to set up two cameras. Um, one camera is going to look like this, where you're just going to be focusing on your workstation. And just know that viewing the working area is more important than seeing your face. So that first view will look like that. Second camera, they'll usually have they'll usually have you, have you use like your laptop for the first one and your phone for the second one. So the second camera, they want to focus on the floor so that they can see the items to be disinfected, trash and soiled linens bags, and so that they can see your kit, your floor, your work area, and make sure that you're doing everything safely. They, you're going to have a proctor. They will check your ID and everything, and your screen is going to look like this while you're taking the exam. Like I said, you have a clock on here that's going to be able to help you keep your pace and everything. So that is everything that you should need to know to get you started on preparing for the theory and practical exam to get your instructor's license. Uh, again, I do offer coaching courses and I have resources like sample lesson plans and stuff on my website. So check that out. It's linked in the description below. And I hope this helped. Best of luck and feel free to get in touch with me if you would like any help passing your exam. Thank you.